Uh, one more to talk about. What have you been, um, well, considering recently? Uh, no, I've not, I've not been considering this one recently, but let's, let's go through it. So, um, the last one on the list is Starbucks. Um, we said we would look for, a, um, last week we said we'd look for a more disastrous earnings. And I think this is probably going to be, uh, probably the one. Uh, so quickly the, the sort of headline items, um, analysts wanted, uh, Starbucks to churn out about $9.16 billion, um, dollars in revenue. And uh, Starbucks came in at eight point five six billion, so they missed by about six hundred million uh, there. It's actually a two percent drop in terms of revenue. I've actually put in my notes Steve, that it was plus minus two percent. Um, so <laughs> comparable sales actually declined four percent, but there was an, these were offset by a two percent increase in average ticket. Um, so it could have been it could have been worse. Um, op margins decreased by 240 basis points. They're down now at 12, uh, 12.7%. Gap EPS analysts wanted 80 cents and Starbucks reported 68 cents. That's a decline of 14%. Uh, the one sort of bright spark in the in the number part was that the loyalty program continues to grow at Starbucks. Uh, it was up about 6%. And this is people who have used it in the last 90 days as well. So it now has 32.8 million users. So so pretty hefty misses across the board. It's not hard to see why it was down. Um, it got worse, though, when they got to the guidance part because they revised that down quite heavily. Uh, they were saying uh, 10 to 12 percent revenue growth and 15 to 20 percent EPS growth. And they revised this down to just low single digits in revenue growth and flat to low single digit EPS. Um, they were OP, uh, OP margin um, op, um, operating margins were guided to being just flat. And they said that they expect that global and US to be low single digit declines to flat and China will be a low single digit decline. So uh, that was not a particularly impressive guide. Uh, this is a section that I've got down as CEO bollocks. Uh, it says in a highly challenged environment, the quarter's results do not reflect the power of our brand. Our capabilities or the opportunities ahead, commented Laxman Narasimhan, Narasimhan, who is the new uh, chief executive officer. It did not meet our expectations, but we understand the specific challenges and opportunities immediately in front of us. We have a clear plan to execute and the entire organization is mobilized around it. Here we go, Steve. We are very confident in our long term and know that our triple shot reinvention with the two pump strategy will deliver on the limitless potential of this brand. I immediately want to call for his head. Um, Finchat.io, Steve, we used it uh, um, again on this uh, to just list what it thought was the six major issues in the call. And here's what it told me. Uh, decline in traffic. It said there was a notable decrease in store traffic, especially among more occasional customers in both the US and China. The decline was uh, attributed to a more cautious customer environment and possibly influenced by broader economic factors. It said actually the weather's been pretty bad, Steve. Uh, I know um, in Britain we like to blame the, the weather for every time our GDP doesn't grow uh, by 0.1%. Um, but yeah, they said that um, they think this affected uh, same store sales and they said it could be as much as three uh, percent obviously there's economic volatility in the middle east uh, there is uh, instability in the, in the middle east which continues to affect market performance it's also a boycott going on at the moment because uh, there are uh, some odd ties to uh, funding israel which i'm not entirely sure are, are quite understood um, they said market conditions in China. Again, Steve and I have spoken about this. The consumer is not in a super healthy place in China, and that's reflecting in, in Starbucks sales. And it's made um, uh, consumers have shopped down, essentially, is what is what they were saying. They've, they've stopped going to a high-priced American coffee maker and gone to more sort of local value-oriented uh, value oriented players. Uh, they also have some operational challenges in the US because there are things like... Um, um, product, having issues with product availability, but also operating throughput has uh, it was flagged as an issue in the call. Also, uh, unionization happening quite a lot across the uh, across the board. Starbucks now working with its employees to see how um, a union will. Uh, you know, he's going to work in this company. And the last problem that they highlighted was uh, engagement with occasional and non-reward customers. So they said that there's a, a recognized need to 
better reach out and demonstrate their value to customers that are more occasional customers, not rewards customers. And they think that's a, a significant growth opportunity that Starbucks has yet to capitalize on. Steve, as a member of the two pump strategy, um, what did you think of this stock? Down 15% on the week, Steve. Uh, yeah, down 15% and still not a level I'm going to buy it at. Um, but if it goes much lower, I might take another look, I think. Um, it feels a lot like stock market karaoke, uh, a lot of what you kind of just said. Um, cautious consumer in the US, people trading down, weak demand in China and uh, uncertainty in the Middle East and random boycotts over uh, Israel. This shows up in a lot of places in consumer product uh, stuff. And I don't think people should be massively surprised to find it showing up in Starbucks uh, at the moment. The kind of unique, interesting bit was the unionization bit. I think this is a real issue uh, for Starbucks, and that's the bit I still need to kind of wrap my head around. For a long time, they made a lot of money by not having a unionized um, workforce. And exactly how they can get on with that not being the case is uh, genuinely it's the thing I need to try and work out uh, with this uh, company. So there's a good amount here that will pass. Uh, they're the first company that I've thought of as maybe standing to benefit from global warming if the lousy weather is stopping uh, people coming into their stores and weighing on um, their their traffic, both in the, in the States and China. The story is kind of different for both the States and China, I guess. So the States is sort of about 70% of their um, business. China is actually really not an awful lot at the moment. Um the issue is that that's where it was supposed to be growing uh, quite a bit. And um, that looks like it's at the very least going to be delayed. I was listening to actually uh, an oldish interview from Chris Bloomstra, and I know I had this as my consumption last week, but he, I think, still does, but certainly at the time owned Starbucks um, and said, look, biggest risk with this is operating in China. Um, he didn't trust the government to not just seize the things, uh, to be honest, and say you just can't uh, trade here because – he thinks eventually communists just seize assets and, and you don't get your money back uh, out of them. And that would be really bad for um, Starbucks if it happens. And look, that's a risk and you can price that risk. And I'm not saying it's not a buy at the right price. But um, the thing about China, I think, is perhaps that it's not just an inevitable when uh, this thing recovers. I feel like demand in the US is an inevitable when it uh, recovers. And maybe it takes prohibitively long for today's prices. But I feel like that's going to be a thing. China, I'm less certain on. And if that was supposed to be the big kind of growth engine rolling out stores across China, um, especially for a relatively undifferentiated product like Starbucks, I mean, it's it's sort of mass market, right? It's not a kind of luxury um, thing. I can see that I might be more optimistic about uh, demand for stuff that differentiates you, i.e. high end uh, luxury returning a bit quicker than everyday luxuries. Um, although I, I don't, drink coffees particularly every day and when i do i don't go to starbucks mostly because they're inconveniently located for where i live however um it's not a million miles from where i'd consider uh taking a closer look at this we had chris hill on the show of course way back uh when it was at the time they still be don't know uh, the largest holding in his portfolio and he said look put simply this is a legally addictive substance and these people have a right to um sell it uh, I don't know a lot how a lot of things are going to look like in the world, but I do know people will still be pouring caffeine into their bodies. Um, and okay, I sort of see the uh, the story there if you kind of stretch the long term demand out. Um, I'm not necessarily against it. It's at a 52 week low. I still think it needs to go lower, but don't be hugely surprised if I um, suddenly announce that I've taken a closer look at this one. Yeah, that that was the remark that I got on Twitter. Um, I I um, somebody reached out to me and said I'm really expected to see Starbucks added to the portfolio, sort of scribbled on your on your Twitter somewhere. And and for me, uh, my my issue with it is the same as you. There's just a lot of uncertainty around the company at the moment, and I think this it could. It could be one of those things where, you know, Captain Hindsight looks at this in two years and says, oh, well, it was a blood on the streets kind of moment. But just while we're right in this moment, it feels very difficult to buy. It's got a lot of issues. Um, it, the, the China bit uh, is is scary to me. Um, the, 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 the consumer is in quite poor health over there. I worry about um, 
what inflation has done to its its pricing. I think it's very expensive to have a coffee at Starbucks at the moment. I agree with Chris Hill in that I think people will be pouring caffeine into the body um, you know, in, in 10 years' time. But my worry is, will they be pouring Starbucks? Are we about to see um, you know, a, a fallen angel kind of stock uh, thing going on here? Um, it's tough to say. Uh, I, I've had, I've just, I, curiosity killed the cat, Steve. I've, I've had a look at this three pump, two pump strategy and, um, it's a stupid corporate name for, uh, things that they want to do. Um, but essentially the, it boils down to, um, well, five five things that they want to do. Uh, they want to elevate the brand, strengthen the scale um, digitally, uh, become more global, um, which includes a um, fifty five thousand um, uh, eventually stores by goal, uh, by twenty thirty. So they'll need to open eight a day uh, from now until then. Uh, I was I was working out so. Um, that may happen. They're a big company. Um, that could happen. They think they want. They want to generate three billion in savings over three years, uh, two billion outside the store, um, and they want to reinvigorate the partner culture. So, look, if they get to fifty five thousand stores by twenty thirty, uh, this stock is probably cheap here. If you believe that, if that happens, um, you know these are just goals. These can change. The triple shot reinvention and two pump strategy might not stick around till twenty thirty. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, same as you, I could buy this. I could look at this and buy. I think it's a very easy business to understand. I just think I worry at the moment that it has, it has a lot of competition uh, in the US, and uh, the the threats to me here are. The, the, I think they might just be too big. I think I think there might be a, 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 a hill I cannot get over. Interesting stuff. I sort of wonder sometimes, and I feel like a thing that I've been thinking a fair bit lately, seeing of various companies reporting the same thing, which is, yeah, struggle in China, so revenues aren't at least growing as we expected, or maybe are even down, depending on exactly which company you're looking at here. I mean, my thought is... I, I'm not massively wanting to find a way to bet on a China rebound, particularly. I'm I'm dubious on that, and I've kind of said that before on this uh, show. I may be wrong, but it's not something I'm particularly thinking, how do I invest to do this? But I think if I were wanting to, if I suddenly saw something that got me confident about a China uh, rebound, I think I would rather do it by looking at companies that have exposure to China rather than companies that are in China. Um, I like that a lot more than I like... Um, Put this way, I like Starbucks or Apple or frankly anything uh, like that a lot more than I like um, Alibaba or um, Baidu uh, or the like. Could always do it by Tesla, uh, of course, which has just been partnering up with some Chinese things, but a bit too much noise around that for me to figure out exactly um, whether it would be, well, how much it would benefit from a, uh, a resurging China. You've been watching a segment from the Playing Footsie Show brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.